In my previous video, we have learned about distance time graph. Have you watched it yet? If not, I suggest that you watch that video first and then you come back to this video. In this video, I'll be teaching you about speed time graphs and we'll start right now. My name is Shirley and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to improve in your math skills, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so that you don't miss anything. Let's take a look at what is a speed time graph. For a speed time graph, we have two axes, which is the vertical axis, which represents the speed, whereas the horizontal axis represents the time. And the gradient of the graph represents the rate of change of speed with respect to time, and it is also called as acceleration. Okay, let's look at this graph. So the first line is PQ, second line is QR, and the third line is RS. So we're going to analyze these three lines, okay, and see what it means, yeah? So for PQ, it means acceleration, okay? QR means uniform speed, and the third one, okay, RS means deceleration. Okay, so let's go to PQ first, okay? We understand what is PQ means first. So PQ is positive gradient. So I'm going to write over here, okay? So PQ is positive gradient. And what does it mean? Okay, it means that the speed increases from u meter per second to v meter per second. Okay, so I'm going to write here speed increases. Okay, and then this one means that acceleration. Okay, it's acceleration. So acceleration means the formula for acceleration. Huh? Okay, it means that it's the change of speed. over okay over the change of time okay and then the area of the trapezium a represents the distance okay the distance in the period of t1 seconds okay so i'm going to write it over here yeah so area of trapezium a i just write a here okay represents the distance Okay, distance traveled. Okay, in a period of t one seconds. Okay, so that is all about uh, the line PQ. Okay, next we look at the line QR. Okay, so the line QR is over here. It's a horizontal line. It means that the gradient is zero. So when the zero gradient means that there is no change in speed. Okay, so I'm going to write it over here, here, on top here. Okay, so it's a zero gradient. Okay, and it means that there is no change in speed. Okay, and it also means uniform speed. Okay, it means that the speed is constant, especially when you're driving on a highway, you want to maintain your speed uh, at 100 kilometers per hour. Okay, that is uniform speed, okay? And then the area, okay, the area B, okay, represents the distance. Okay, the distance in a period of T, T1, T2 minus T1 seconds. Okay, so I'm going to write it over here. So area, okay, of the rectangle B, okay, represents the distance traveled. Distance traveled. Okay, in a period of T2 minus T1 seconds. Okay, so that's all about the line QR and the area B. Okay, now let's look at the third line. Okay, the third line. Uh. Okay, so the third line is over here. So this is deceleration. Why? Because the gradient is negative. Okay, it means that the car is moving, uh, is slowing down. Okay, so here would be negative gradient. Okay, slowing down means the speed decreases. So speed okay decreases right like that negative gradient okay speed decreases okay 
and then it means that it's deceleration. So what's the formula of deceleration? Okay, is the change of speed over the change of time. Okay, and this is different from the distance time graph, okay? Because the distance time graph, if the graph is going down, it means that it's going back to the original position or to in the opposite direction. But for this, okay, it means that, okay, it means that, so here I'm going to write no change in direction. It just means it's slowing down, that's it. Okay, no change in the direction. Okay, and then the area C, so area C, okay, represents the area under the graph and it means that it's distance traveled, okay, in the period of T3 minus T2 seconds. So area C is distance traveled, distance traveled, okay, in the period of, so T3 minus T2 seconds. Okay, so that's all about speed times graph. So now let's move on to the first example about speed time graph. Let's look at example number one. The speed time graph shows the motion of a car for a period of 14 seconds. Calculate A, the average speed, in meter per second for the first 6 seconds. So average speed, we know that is total distance over total time. So for the first 6 seconds, it's going to be this area plus this area, okay, over 6 seconds, okay? So I'm going to write down the A answer here. So average speed, Okay, so total area, the first one is a trapezium. So I'm going to use the formula of trapezium. Half times the two parallel lines added up together. So it'll be 5 plus 10. And then after that, times with the height of the trapezium, which is 4. Okay, then after that, I plus with B. So B is a rectangle, which is 10 times 2, or 2 times 10. Okay, then over, the time is 6 seconds. Okay, so for this, uh, is uh, 30 plus 20, okay, over. 6. So it will be 50 over 6 and we simplify it, we'll get 25 over 3. Okay, and it's in meter per second. Okay, so next for B, find the value of T if the distance traveled by the car for the first 4 seconds is half the distance traveled at the uniform speed. Okay, uniform speed will be here. Okay, so we're going to find the area of, okay, I'm going to label this as C. Okay, B and C. <clears throat> so I'm going to write down the working over the other side. Here, here, B. Okay, so B, so to find this, I'm going to use the area of the trapezium, which is area of A, is equal to half, okay, times with the area of B plus C, which is a rectangle, okay? So let's find this, so area of A, okay, just now we already got an area of A here, which is 30, okay? I'm going to write here 30, okay, equals to half times, so the area of B plus C is a rectangle, so this will be here to here is 10 and then here is t minus 4 okay so t minus 4 times with 10 okay so here will be 30 equals to so we can cancel off so 5 so we open up the bracket so it will be 5t minus 20 okay so the negative 20 shift over to the left hand side will be 50 so 50 equals to 5t so therefore we found the answer t is equals to 10 50 divided by 5 is 10 so therefore this t value is 10 okay Let's solve for C. Okay, so find the value of V if the acceleration for the last two seconds is <coughs> 3.5 meter per second squared, which means that we have to find the gradient for this line. Okay, so this is a triangle. Okay, so this over this, okay, is equal to 3.5. So it's a positive uh, gradient. So for C, I'm going to write it here. So acceleration, acceleration, Okay, it's equals to 3.5. And we know that acceleration is the changes of speed over the changes of time. Okay, so which is V minus 10. Okay, so this is V minus 10. Okay, and this is 14 minus 10, which is 4. Okay, so over, yeah, 14 minus 10. We've got T already. Okay, so minus 10 straight away. So this will be 3.5. So V minus 10 equals to, so 3.5 times 4. Okay, because 14 minus 10 is 4. So 3.5, then times with 4, we'll get 14. 
So 14 here. So to find V, I'm going to use 14 plus with 10. So we'll get the final answer as 24. Ta-da! That's the answer. Let's look at question number two. The speed time graph shows the motion of two vehicles. So graph OAB represents the motion of Injit Zabadi's car. So this is Injit Zabadi. And graph CD represents the motion of taxi driven by Mr. Lau. So this is Mr. Lau. So the difference between the distance travelled by the car and the taxi in a period of 24 seconds is 160. Calculate the value of V. So for this, in order to find the distance travelled, we have to find the area under the graph. Okay, so I'm going to find the difference between them. So in Chisabadi's area is a trapezium, whereas Mr. Lau is a triangle. Okay, so I'm going to use the trapezium minus the triangle and it's equal to 160. So this will be half, okay, times. So the two parallel lines add up together is 24, okay, plus. So 24 minus 8 is uh, 16, okay? And then times the height of the trapezium, which is V minus 10, okay? So this one, after that, minus with the triangle, okay? Which is for Mr. Lau. So half times base times height. So base is 24 minus 8, which is 16, okay? And times with the height of the triangle, which is V, okay? And it's equals to 160. Okay, let's solve this, okay? So let's use a calculator. So 24 plus 16 and then divided by 2. So I've got here 20. So 20, okay. Then I times with V minus 10, okay. Then minus, this, this is 8V. So 8V equals to 160. Okay, so this is 20V minus 200 minus 8V equals to 160. So 20V minus 8V is 12V equals to, so the 200, negative 200 shift over to the right side become plus 200. So we get 360, okay? So V is 360 divided by 12, so we will get 30. So the answer is 30. Let's look at example 3. The speed time graph shows the motion of a van for a period of 3 seconds. Calculate A, the rate of change of speed in meter per second square for the first 3 seconds. So let's solve for A first, okay? So A, to find the rate of change of speed, we're going to find the gradient of this line, this line, okay? So I'm going to use the right angle triangle and find the gradient. So it's this over this, okay? So rate of change of speed. Okay, it's equals to 30 minus 12 over 3 minus 0, which is 18 divided by 3, which is 6 meter per second square. Okay, so that's the answer for A. Now let's solve for B. The distance in meters traveled for the first 10 seconds. Okay, first 10 seconds is from here to here. Okay, which means we have to find the area under the graph for A and B. Okay, so it's the trapezium plus with the rectangle. So for B, okay, to find the distance traveled so i'm going to use the area of the trapezium which is half times the two parallel lines added together which is 12 plus 30 okay 12 plus 30 okay and then the height of the trapezium is 3 and then plus with the area of the rectangle b which is 7 times 30 okay let's solve this so 12 plus 30 divided by 2 and then times 3 okay let's solve with the calculator so 12 plus 30 and divided by 2, then times 3, we'll get 63. So 63 and 7 times 30 is 210. So therefore, the answer is 273 meters. Okay, now let's solve for C. Okay, for C, they say that the value of T, okay, find the value of T if the magnitude of the rate of change of speed after the 10 seconds which means that is this, find this gradient, okay? It's the same as the magnitude of the rate of change of speed for the first three seconds, which is six meter per second square, okay? So we are gonna use 30, okay, over T minus 10, that will be the gradient, okay, of the line going down. So equals to, okay, so for this, we've already gotten six, so equals to six, okay? So it's 30 equals to six T minus 60. Okay, so 6t equals to 90, so t will be 90 divided by 6, which is 15. Okay, so the answer for t is equals to 15. That's the answer. Well, that's all for now. Stay tuned to my next video, which is SPM Pass Your Questions about graphs of motions. 
coming up soon. Bye!